All right, everybody, welcome back to our channel. We wanted to take this time before this video to address a couple things, provide a little bit of background of what we're thinking, where we've been, um, and, and simply just let you know our heart and how we're feeling about things before we carry on with the rest of this video. We filmed this video about a week ago um, and we were gonna delay posting it, but we thought it would be a good time to use this as an opportunity to let you know where we're coming from and how we feel about situations in today's world and something that's been going on for quite a long time. We just wanna have a very open and candid conversation on what's going on. I know a lot of people, we've been talking to a lot of you guys yeah. over Instagram DMs and comments and there's so many opinions and thoughts and feelings and I think everyone's really upset like as you should be um, and it's just really serious so we wanted to just talk to you guys how we normally would about our thoughts on things. I know we don't typically go into anything political or anything like that. To us this isn't like a political topic. It is a a human topic. It is yeah. a people topic that mm -hmm. deserves to be talked about, deserves to be spoken about and in today's world right now there's so much uh voice taking place there's so many opinions so many uh expressions of pain how oh, it's hard to navigate through your feelings because yeah. there's so many voices in your head telling you what to feel i think regardless of like who you are and where you come from everybody is kind of struggling with how to articulate exactly. what they're feeling and everyone works through those feelings differently so whether you're out in the streets protesting whether you're posting on social media you are trying to gather your thoughts everyone kind of goes through things at their own pace and that's what we've been trying to do and we have compassion for everybody that is yeah. trying to figure out how to navigate through this we are very much in agreement with silence is like of the oppressor however Silence isn't just like quietness in words, but it's absence of action. And for us, action is something that needs to take place now. Yeah. But it takes time to build a plan. process and plan yeah. of action. And that's just like, a lot of people have trouble expressing their thoughts on small issues. And this is like a really big issue. So like we ask that you also have compassion for everyone in the world right now for other influencers or other family members or other friends yeah. people in your life that you look up to or people in your life that you see or that you spend time with give them a chance to articulate their opinions and their voice on their own um, so they can be as impactful as they're able to be rather than just saying what someone wants them to say and I think that's a big piece of something we're behind and is the sense of yeah now is the time to speak up mm -hmm. but it's not a race to speak up. It, it's it's a matter of speaking up with words that actually mean something and yeah, that are impactful, rather than a, a simple screenshot or repost of a story on Instagram. Like, yeah. yes, that's great. That stuff is needed to create awareness, but impact will happen when people are using their true voices, just like a love language. Like everyone has different ways to express themselves. Mm -hmm. in, in one thing that we really think about when we've been talking about this together is that there's fighters, there's peacemakers, like everyone different. is going to be able to help out in a different way. And we need, we need that as a society. We need that as a people. Maybe those people are speaking up on creating peace and love. Like that's what we also need in this world is like people using their love language or their passions to speak up in different ways that all comes together to create like a, an overall impact. Yeah, and I think that everyone has their own gifts and talents and that's why there are specific leaders in different categories of the world and different issues. So if you feel like, you know, you have a, a strong point of view and you can help inspire and change people in this time of injustice, then you definitely should use that voice and kind of guide people in the right direction because God forbid we don't want everybody speaking up on this that doesn't know how because then there can be a lot of miscommunication and fire. So if you are in a position of leadership and you feel strong enough to do that, I think it's the right thing to do to your responsibility to help guide people in yeah. a right direction. Of being like encouraging rather than forceful. Yeah. Like all of you, like we love when people message us and say like, hey here's some additional information research that i want to provide to you that i found mm -hmm. and i think this will help your understanding or help gather your thoughts 
and it, it's it, it's encouraging it's encouraging us to speak up and we we love that we welcome it but we just want to challenge everyone that's seeing this to like continue to reach out to influencers or other people that you see having a platform like that is impactful but but be encouraging rather than telling them what yeah. they're doing or what they're not doing yeah. and using your voice to tell them how they should use their voice like let them use their voice the way they best know how and give them time to do that. We by no means ever wanted our silence to communicate something that wasn't true to who we are. And we apologize for uh, not addressing this until now. We just, it was, it's been very chaotic and we didn't know how to articulate how we were feeling. Hunter and I have been talking for a couple of days just trying to figure out how to communicate how we feel, how we feel and just process the emotions truly. Uh, and I think a lot of you guys are too. 100% we, have been heartbroken over what has happened in the past week i mean couple weeks years honestly like historically i mean to me it doesn't take rocket science for anyone to understand that this is like so wrong and it's sick and it's sickening like and like it's terrible i don't think horrible or terrible is is a strong enough word to yeah. use like how we feel about what's taking place with george floyd with the cops that surrounded it with the injustices that are in the system today yeah i think that george floyd is just the last i mean it's like this may be the straw that broke the camel's back which shouldn't be necessary there has been this type of behavior happening over and over and over there's so many stories that don't make the news there's so many incidences and for all yeah. of the people that experience prejudice just like in their daily life that we don't see and you don't I think really realize that unless you interact with people from other races or your lives really cross paths a lot. We obviously do not support racism. We don't support the demonic acts that took place. We wouldn't want to see that happen to anyone, no matter what they've done in their life, no matter what skin color, what religion, what political stance, like disregard all that. This was a white man on a black man. It revealed a lot about our world today and mm -hmm. how things haven't really changed even though it's masked as if they have. Yeah. There's a lot of things and injustices that are still taking place. We see that, we recognize it. And I think that we definitely have learned through all of this, our position of privilege and we do not want to take um, that like for granted, instead use it as an opportunity to hopefully create change and push people forward in that position that need to be yeah. have a heart change or be inspired and really we can only do that by trying to remove stereotypes and make a change down at a behavior level because at the end of this honestly like it's not going to go away right there's going to be i know it's all you see when you pull up your social media feed right now it's everywhere but eventually like anything else it will kind of fall off and we can't let this just continue to happen over and over again what's yeah. it going to take for there to be a real behavior shift fundamentally a behavior shift like yeah. down to its core it's a behavior shift it's a moral shift it's a people mm -hmm. shift it's mm -hmm. it's us all coming together to create a change that will impact not only today but like the future moving forward and so one thing that like we talk about a lot even before this and just like in general across the board and in, in very many different situations is labeling and stereotyping mm -hmm. and uh just the different types of groupings people put on each other in today's world whether it's like race and characteristics that go along with race gender. sexuality gender political maybe it's beliefs. uh yeah exactly political beliefs where you live socioeconomic class mm -hmm. um even for us like we Julie just mentioned white privilege that is a label and but however it's true like yes we are white and we are privileged absolutely however that isn't something that defines us as a person. No. It's something we were born into that doesn't define us. Right. And I think that that's true for a lot, every, no, whatever group you, you know, are bucketed into. I think nobody wants to be uh, just thought of as that one label. So there's always going to be 
certain people within different racial groups in different socioeconomic groups that are maybe more extreme yeah. or they identify with a certain belief and to bucket everyone into that is not fair it's, this can also like really apply and where we see it a lot too is within gender stereotypes things behaviors that are acceptable for men acceptable for women and you can't cross over those paths um, it could be for sexuality people put gay people in a certain category or yeah. transgenders in a certain category and they they just slap this whole generalization on everybody thinking that they are those things and everyone like the truth is that humans are so multifaceted we're all so different we have so many different beliefs and values and morals and just because you look a certain way or identify with one certain category doesn't mean that you um, automatically adopt all of the beliefs of that extreme group. Not only beliefs, but like characteristics. Yeah. To me, when I think about what's going on in today's world and society and all the news and everything that's just taking place, it's a separation. Even like messages and stuff you'll receive it's creating addition it's it's creating additional divide yeah. rather than like let's all come together and be one to create a solution like well, to create something in a plan of action to move forward it's just like when you think think about your closest friend or family member or a loved one when you have conflict and you're yelling at each other and everyone's super upset you can't actually come to any sort of conclusion or move forward because there's so many so much anger and high emotion yeah. so it's the same thing with these types of issues we have to come together and calmly communicate so we can learn from each other we can educate each other on what is happening and what each person's unique position in our world is responsible for and how we can progress for so one thing we're really passionate about is this like line drawn between minorities versus like the majority Rather than race versus race, we really want to promote like love versus hate. And, like us all working together as a people and come together to conquer like this thing called racism. Like let's work together as a people and not create an additional divide. Like that's that's a divide that's going to complicate things. It's a divide that's going to waste time trying to call solutions there rather than to fix the overarching problem which is evil. The thing is, we're at the end of the day, we need to work together, we need to integrate together and all mesh so that we can learn from each other, we can educate each other, and we can strip away the stereotypes and the divide and move forward as one. I'm sure all of you guys have seen the petitions that you can be signing, um, ways you can be donating to help the George Floyd incident, and I think Beyond that, we just wanted to inspire a bigger change to continue after all of this is kind of died down in the media and to keep making a change moving forward and sticking together as yeah. brothers and sisters. We believe forced change isn't change. Uh, we can all push to sign a petition and push for change, which is impactful in the immediate, but in the end, it doesn't carry over and change the way people are to other people. Even though the George Floyd situation is very evident and something widely depicted as racism today, that's not the only example. Like, we need to squash racism altogether, hate altogether, evilness altogether. To all of our black brothers and sisters, we want you guys to know that we support you, we see you, we want to fight for you and promote anti-racism and however we can help try to inspire other people to do that, we are going to do our best. We acknowledge we are not perfect. We're not saying the perfect thing by yeah. any means. There's probably a lot that you could pick apart in what we're speaking on. And I'm sure and people will. <laughs> we're doing our best to continue and further educate ourselves. It's a work in progress mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. It should be a work in progress for you. Nobody's perfect. People who are claiming to be perfect are actually part of the problem rather than the solution. Let's all work together to inspire each other, to encourage each other. Have authentic conversations. And to and work together fun. to make a impact that will last. We love you guys. And we hope that today will be brighter as well as a start to create tomorrow and in the future to be brighter as well. So with all of that said, we have another spritz and chips segment and don't, by no means do we want this to feel insensitive. We just thought we could use this video as a chance to speak up for how we feel 
and what we believe in, and we hope to make a difference. What's up, everybody? Spritz and chips. It's good. You know what it is? Let me guess. Here, can I have a coaster? Yeah. Um, is it? Where did I find these coasters? The mercantile, I think. It's like where we get everything. Tequila. Cheers. Cheers. Tequila and what else is it? We're about, we're about to get lit. Lemon and grapefruit? Or and rum? I say we're about to get lit because it is an L-I-T. A Long Island oh, iced tea. nice. In a Long Island iced tea, as I just showed you, is vodka, yeah. rum, mm -hmm. tequila, gin. Seriously? Triple sec, and lime. Oh god, it's terrible. Good thing I'm not working out tomorrow. I um, would not fly before a workout. It's equal parts of all five and then double parts of the lime. So let's say like a half a shot of each. Yeah. And then a full shot of lime. So vodka, You know what would be good rum. is to top a little diet Snapple in it. I got the idea when you were drinking the tea. I was like, oh, I'm going to get I see. But yeah, it's vodka, gin, tequila, rum, triple sec. Vodka, gin, tequila, rum, triple sec. Should. What is it? Vodka, tequila, rum, triple, triple sec. Gin. Gin. Vodka, gin, tequila, rum. Basically everything in your cabinet. Lime. Topped off with Topo Chico. Nice. It's a good one. I've never made a Long Island iced tea before. Yeah. But it was like the I first. I didn't know that there was all that alcohol. It was like the it. first drink I ordered from a restaurant. It was. That's yeah. such a first like drink when you're out. Like 21. Yeah. Anyways, what a 21 cheers. 21 year old would order. Cheers to my first cheers. Long Island iced tea. Welcome to Spritz and Chips. I used to think these are these are sweet, and they probably are at restaurants. Because they add a bunch of sugar and yeah. stuff in them. Yeah, but it's when you just make good. it fresh, it's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. We should post for a thumbnail really quick. We never have a thumbnail for this. Okay, let's do it. Thumbnail time. We'll get to it in a second. Oh. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. So we've already had dinner tonight. So there's no chip for tonight's spritz and chips. We just had poke bowls. I think we'll probably whip out okay. the snack here in a little bit. We'll probably whip out the triscuits and the cheese here in a little bit. <laughs> we are addicted to triscuits. They're and so good. And Merlot cheese that I showed you about. Oh, so good. And the combo of the two when you marry them both. Heaven. It's honestly shocking you can get it at Kroger. It must be a pretty uh, pretty popular. popular cheese. Yeah, but I found it at Central Market. Get. They have it at H-E-B, Whole Foods, I guess I any mean, grocery everywhere. store. Merlot cheese. So good. It has the purple coating outside like to it. Like a Merlot wine. A cheese person reached out to me and said it's not wax, but it's edible and it's probably the best part because it's like infused in the Merlot. So, so eat good. the purple outside exterior part of the cheese. If you get it, Anyways, you should do like a little like IGTV on that cheese so that people can go back to it because they're probably all lost. Maybe. Yeah. Anyways, I talked about it in the vlog. It's just my favorite cheese. Welcome to day spritz and chips. Welcome. Uh, it's been a minute. Per usual, we're doing another relationship dilemmas, relationship therapy. I would say it's part two. Part two. But it's not. It's, it's just like, another. It's like part rendition. five or six. But it's just part two There's of- There's no parts anymore because it's, it's just a tradition now. Yeah. Um, which by the way, I want a, a, a different name than Relationship Dilemmas. What do you think's a better? You guys leave some suggestions for like names 
what would you call this? Like when you guys submit your questions to us for advice, it can be family, friends, relationship, romantic, anything yeah. and that you need advice on and we answer it. Basically relationship therapy. Yeah. But I don't know, what's an easy term for it? But sometimes it's like know. friendship. It's not always like couples. It's just relationships in general. SOS. <laughs> Help. Like advice. Issues, advice, dilemmas, yeah. problems, cheers. I mean, We're not out of quarantine, but things in Texas at least are opening up slowly. Yeah. Very slow rollout. Very slow, but for the most part, we're still staying at home um, and just going out for necess necess necessities. necessities. And we've been out to dinner one time. In a minute. All right. All right, Nemo. All right. Um, so. So, in terms yeah. of what's been happening, we did vlog week last week. We did vlog week. If you're stumbling across our channel, we do sprint and chips sometimes, mm -hmm. just covering a topic, which yep. is a sit down kind of conversational video like this. We do weekly vlogs, daily vlogs, travel vlogs, fashion content, beauty yeah. content. Home. Home decor that I usually produce. And I'm usually the director, producer, and creator. I'm, I'm the creative director I'm and the, designer. <laughs> And I'm you're the, the production team. I'm the creative director of the home decor, the <laughs> interior design not. of the ID. Mm -mm. Actually, you have pretty good taste. Yeah. I'm like the architectural designer near the interior designer. Anyways, anywho, we're going to get started with spritz and chips today. It is relationship dilemmas. A lot of y'all asked questions over on Instagram. DM'd me or DM'd Julia, yeah. and we got some questions we want to read off and And you guys can advice. always, like, even if it's not, uh, we don't have, like, a question box up, you can DM us anytime, just write, like, spritz and chips question, and put your story below, and we will, we always save all of them and put them in, like, a folder for when we film these, yeah. so. And most of these questions, actually, on this spritz and chips are questions that were asked Outside of outside the, yeah. of like any box that Julia put out there it was just like asked over the past couple weeks. Yeah. DMing us, we saved them and we're answering them now. I'm excited. Okay, let's get into the questions. We are not psychologists. Oh yeah. We are not professionals. professionals. No. This, this is, is not this is like definitely not a this is what you should do conversation, mm -mm. but our opinion and viewpoint based on the information you gave us. We're hoping that the like what the answer to your stories and questions can provide is like just one opinion that can give you a more well-rounded uh, decision on like how you're gonna approach the yeah. situation. So as much unbiasedness as possible, if that's a word. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's dive in. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, do you like my hair shorter like this, or do you like it when the extensions were long? I like it that. You like it like this? It's more natural. Really? All righty. Okay. Q numero uno. Okay. There's a guy I'm very interested in for two years now. Okay. I think he's interested in me too. It makes signals on both ends. Okay. I can tell he cares, but I'm not sure if it's just a, in a friendly way or more. We used to be neighbors and our parents are good friends. That's kind of fun. Recently, we traveled together as friends. Another thing is he now lives in a different state. We hit each other up on social media a lot. I already went to visit him twice. I don't want to be the one telling him my feelings for him because I'm scared I could lose him as a friend. Okay. But I can't stop thinking about him. What should I do? I want to know if he feels the same way. Help, what should I do? You gotta tell him. I think you just have to say, oh, you have a lot. You just have to say, hey, I just wanted, like, I don't want you to feel any pressure and it doesn't matter either way and I don't want our relationship to change, but I like, I have feelings for you and um, yeah, let's well, see what happens. I think- You can't live your life just knowing, the like, holding them in the whole time. No, totally. And I think there's a couple points to pull, like pull out, which is one, you've been feeling this way for two years. Yeah, that's a long time. It's a long time. It wasn't just like a thing that like came and faded away. Yeah. You used to be neighbors, so you've known him a long time which could mean comfortability, but it could also mean like you've grown to know him more than anybody else. And your parents are friends, so you know he has a good family, they all yeah. hang out, would be a good positive thing if they were together, it'd be like one big happy family. So I should just talk about it. I mean, I think that you should just 
just it's like ripping a band-aid off and you're just gonna have to say it and you have to expect if he says like he doesn't feel the same way in return you're just gonna have to know that and you're gonna have to move on and i mean sooner or later you're gonna say something if you guys are gonna be friends for the rest of your life then you're always gonna like wonder so you might as well get yeah. it over with or, now or if you don't say anything it's like he's gonna get a girlfriend or you're gonna get a boyfriend things are gonna happen though yeah and so you might as well speak up and do it in like a gentle friendly way that's like look i don't want this to ever change our friendship or like get in the way of our friendship because we have such a great friendship and you're yeah. one of our closest friends but i think i like you i think i've liked you for quite a while i've always been curious if you have the same way if not you cool. should go visit him because i know he, now they're separated which is kind of yeah hard, but she but said she's visited him twice already by yourself right that's like you like him that's like we like each other yeah yeah you should say something go visit again and say something. go visit again and if he's just like saying like oh i met a girl i've been hanging out with her or i've been on a few dates she's like don't 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 do that anymore go visit I'm go here go say something and hook up <laughs> <laughs> do something and maybe they are tell us up. how it goes maybe they've hooked up before. maybe they have well if they have then it's then i don't know what she's waiting for that's like a fantasy like your neighbor man <laughs> Okay. Right. Next question. Okay. This is a woman asking for her sister. Okay. Advice for her sister. Okay. Her boyfriend of four and a half years, who she lived with in Colorado, ended their relationship out of the blue at the end of January. Okay. She was obviously shocked and hurt. Yeah. The only reason he gave was that he wanted to enjoy the rest of his 20s since they'd been dating since he was 22 and she was 20. So now they're 26 and 24. Right. He kept telling her how she was perfect and said he had nothing bad to say about her and that she's a perfect girlfriend. It's like the whole, it's not you, it's me thing. Yeah. Which is obviously extremely frustrating because being told you're perfect while being broken up with by the person you thought not you were going comforting. to marry is like not comforting at all. Yeah. Turns out he even had a tender over Christmas break while visiting his family in New York. My sister was also there during that time. His mom paid for her airline ticket. That's how close they were. But he still denies everything even though she's has proof. He still texts her telling her that he's sad okay. and that she's perfect, but it makes no sense. So she moved out and is living in another apartment in Denver with her friend and is hoping to move past the heartbreak and eventually oh. attract the right person, Terrible. right guy. Yeah. Any perspective on his reasons for breaking up with her? What mm -hmm. do you think he really meant? Any advice for her to get back in the dating scene after a heartbreak like that? Yeah. Any advice on how to find the right guy? eventually. Mm -hmm. P.S. She is absolutely perfect and beautiful and if you guys know any good guys in Denver, hook her up. Cute. Who do we know anyone in Denver? Not some woman. So my theory is that he, <laughs> my theory is that he is not ready to be in like at that serious level of a relationship and no matter what you want what you can do you can't like change someone's mind obviously she's not trying to do yeah, that yeah it doesn't like she's trying to do uh, that she's not trying to but it's like i don't know it, it's hard because she's probably really sad and she's like well dang it like he still likes me and everything when he's confused but i think at the end of the day like there's gonna be somebody that she's gonna meet that is like no i want you and you are like my number one and is going to be like there and strong and that's the kind of person you want to be with not yeah. somebody that's like wishy-washy even though i'm sure they have a really great connection they probably she thought she was going to marry him and right now she might be like whoa i don't know what i'm supposed to do and like why is he first of all he should not be texting her saying like i miss you and stuff that's mean yeah, that's because BS. he broke up with her but so it's like, true maybe it's true it's true but he always obviously yeah everyone that breaks up has misses each other that's why breakups are hard because you miss them but you know you're not supposed to be together that's why they're difficult sometimes you say you miss them because you want their attention and sometimes yeah. he might be saying he misses you because he feels bad for her yeah and he just like wants to want, her or he wants the attention and he like maybe wants i mean it's like you go through days right so sometimes obviously there was enough pull for him to be like I'm gonna break up with her because I don't want to be with her. And there's enough pull for him to get on Tinder. Exactly, but then some days when he's like lonely, he's probably like, oh, I miss that because that's exactly what. I'd be are. curious if he was on Tinder and got busted, and then they broke up, or if they broke up and then she found out he was on Tinder. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I wonder which one happened first. I know that's a small piece of context. It sounds like 
he she busted him on Tinder after they broke up. Like found out he was on Tinder Tinder after the fact. Yeah. But it could be like she busted him and was confronting him and he was annoyed at being confronted and was like in denial and was like you're trying to put it on her like she's crazy and break, broke up with her. That's I don't, a stretch, I, I but... don't feel like yeah, it sounds complicated. Yeah. Whatever the way that the events went down, but I think regardless Regardless it sounds like you're asking this question and it was January. It's been a while. Yeah, she's probably sounds doing like better now. She's either doing better or already has her mind made up that she's moving on, which I, I would personally say is probably the right decision. Yeah. Yeah, they were together for four and a half years. That's a long relationship. But a lot of people have relationships that long that end up like early on that end up getting broken up and finding someone else. Yeah. Like your one of your boyfriends before us was like four years, right? Yeah. Four four or five. Yeah, and mine was three years. Like we've, yeah. we've each had long relationships, yeah, they're but like really and, you're, and they're young, like yeah. If she's twenty four, or twenty, yeah, oh, twenty four. That's hard though. She probably thought she was gonna marry him because they're like right in that stage. I know, I know. I'm sure it's hard, but at the same time, like he... yeah, but that's like annoying. I mean, and just I don't know. I think that she should do herself a favor and move on and look for somebody that is more sure of themselves. And I promise he'll be coming back around. And he's gonna be wanting her later. Maybe not. Mm, I bet. He'll text her again. I bet he will. They all come back. He'll text her again when she has a, a new boyfriend. Yeah, definitely. Or drunkenly call her and say But I bet she'll hit a point at, at, at some moment where she's like, oh, good thing I moved on. Yeah, like, that wasn't God. the right one. I think, like, I think, yeah, date a little bit. And, like, you'll, once you kind of date and, like, meet some other guys, you'll be like, oh my God, there's other, even if you don't find, like, the one you'll meet some nice boys and it's just kind of nice to remember like, oh, okay, there's other people out there. It's not just this one person. Plenty of men. So. Next question. You wanna read this one? My guy friend and I met back in 2012 through my college best friend's group of friends who was her girlfriend. Her and I were super close. She was even my big and my sorority. However, her and I have had a falling out since college ended and we rarely speak anymore. Him and I, however, have remained on and off again friends over the years and we have always been there for each other when we needed someone. We've had a crush on each other for years now, but we never have really acted on anything due to what I went through with my ex-best friend. The guy and my ex-best friend share some of the same group of friends and so I've always felt awkward about hanging out with them because I know they don't like me due to her. They think that I took his side of hers and that's too long of a story to get into. However, now him and I have gone super close these last months and we text all the time and he's been really supportive and helpful to me. Example, I don't drive due to personal reasons and one morning I complained about not having avocados for my toast and two hours later he showed up to my house with a bag of avocados for me. He brought up the other night that maybe it's time to try and move out of friends and into a relationship. It makes me really scared because when things go back to normal, whenever the f that is, I don't know how I will feel being around his friends and how they will react to me. It makes me nervous having a conversation about it because I know he's going to, I don't care about what they think. So I don't feel like he takes my feelings valid um, and understand. I'm, not, I'm following that. Okay, so the, the way she typed it, I think there's some typos. Conversation about it because I know he's going to be like, I don't care about what they think. So I don't feel like he takes my feelings valid that I care a lot about what they feel towards me. Yeah, so she's self-conscious because she knows or thinks or knows that the friends don't like her. And he's saying, I don't care. I want to be with you regardless. Right. I don't care if and my friends don't like you. she's saying that he's not taking her feelings into right. account. I don't think he's okay. taking, I don't think he's not taking your feelings into account. No. I just don't think he's taking theirs. Right, I, I think he's good. Saying, right, I think which he's like, good. hey, we're good. I think you're like, in a great situation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think like most Here's the people thing, have most the opposite likely, problem. And most likely, y'all are going to find a group of friends, couple friends, outside of that group that he hangs out with. For sure. And I guarantee that you can kind of push through that kind of worst case scenario. If you guys get together in a relationship and you have to be around that group of friends... <laughs> Like you can definitely be the more mature one totally. and you can kind of, they'll grow on you and they'll, you'll grow on them and I am promise just time will like heal things. I think that, you know, if you guys really care about each other, then you can kind of, you know, work towards, um, being cooler with 
the friends, even though I know that's probably super awkward and hard, but he obviously seems to have your defense and like has your back and yeah. he's not like gonna push anything. So that's nice. And I don't think you should be uncomfortable talking about it. He likes you, you like My him. assumption too is that he's like probably like one of the leaders in the group. Like he's probably like one of like the guys that people in the group care about. Yeah. And so I feel like it'd be like they'll quickly move on from any like his like historical stuff. Yeah, if he's like, no, this is like my girlfriend and like I don't care, then they'll follow suit. Like don't be yeah. intimidated by them. And just know a lot of friendships pre relationship break off once there's a relationship. Yeah. Like that's pretty standard. In and a lot of like, come on, that's so long ago. Honestly, what you could do is just reconcile with the girl if you're that worried about it. Like you should just talk to her and just be like, hey, I think I mean it sounds like you're in your late twenties. You probably graduated college a long time ago. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just. I don't know. Pursue it. If y'all like each other, pursue it. I think you it. totally should. If you like him enough, you should forget about all the other people. Yeah, this is not that bad. Yeah, cut the fat. All right. In record fat. Okay. Woo. You sir. I'm getting a lot You're of. You're getting more. Ones, yeah. We I need wanna... something spicy. I've been in a relationship for four and a half years. We got engaged when I was just 22 and he was 26. Six months into our relationship. Okay? They got engaged after six months. After starting to plan my dream wedding, I was having extreme doubts about being ready to get married at that time and decided to cancel it. Okay? So they got engaged and she canceled it. She canceled it. Okay? We stayed together regardless okay. of the broken engagement, okay. which calls for a lot of rocky times, as you can imagine. Definitely. Absolutely. It was not a normal relationship after that. Fast forward to mm -hmm. four years later. Wow. Okay? So Made it four engagement years. Engagement after six months. Okay. Broke it off. Stayed together for four more years. Probably fought the whole time. It was yeah. four and a half years. Mm -hmm. I got my dream job and bought an adorable little bungalow house near the beach for us to live in together. Oh, this makes so much more sense now. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> he had gotten a great job and it seemed like things had fallen into place perfectly and we were on a path to a serious future again. Yeah. So she got a really good job, bought a bungalow house for them yep. to live in together. Yep. He got his dream job there as well. Great. Happily ever after, right? No, wrong. As I'm closing on my house, he applied for a job back in his hometown, a few hours away from me. I couldn't help but feel disregarded and extremely hurt as I felt like he was making a choice for himself without me in mind, mm -hmm. when all I've done is try to make him happy and make decisions for us both. He ended up getting... Except calling up the engagement. Huh? <laughs> Except well, after which six is, months. Which is good. And maybe like, she mm. was getting like family pressure. He's hurt. Six months, quick, quick stuff. Yeah. But he's, I don't know if he's still hurt after four years. Sounds like they were like happily ever after again. He ended up getting the job and moving back in with his parents. Okay. Um, okay. Watching him move his stuff out, my little house was heartbreaking for me. His family really pushed him to take the job. Mm -hmm. He claims that if I love him, I will sell my house, give up my job, and move there for him. Ooh. This was the town I got my accident. She had a terrible accident. This was the town I got my terrible accident. I told him in the past I never want to be there again. Yeah. I love him, but I feel like I'm being treated with no value. I've put so much time and effort into this relationship, and I'm devastated at how it's turned out. Mm -hmm. I'm getting into my upper 20s. And it's hard to meet good guys, mm -hmm. so I'm afraid of ending up alone and having regrets. Well, I've tried to communicate my feelings, but he always disregards them. Do you have any advice on how I should handle this? Should I run for the hills? Okay. She's asking that because we always say run. We always say run. Right. Okay. Um, so that's a lot of a lot of good info. That is. Really good stuff. Lots of good really context. good meat. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys are on totally different pages. It sounds like. I don't know. I to me. Oh, it real sounds... quick. Pause. He was 26. Yeah. And then four months, four years later, so now he's 30. Weird. Okay. He's 30 and she's now 26. He's 30? Mm-hmm. Sure, I'm surprised. Okay. I, I just feel like, okay, I'm trying to put myself in that position. And I feel like... The thing is, the what's the flag for me is that she didn't say, well, 
obviously I just like really want to be with him so now I am mad that I bought the house because like I would rather be close to him she didn't say anything like that you know what I mean she did say that I feel like he's disregarding my feelings right when all I've done is think about us both I know that but and he he is but I feel like what it looks like from the outside is that he has maybe like some resent, maybe some resentment. It's either resentment or he's selfish because he's not taking her feelings into account either way. So either that comes from resentment or I think he I, just wants to do his own thing. I think it's the latter personally because like four years is enough time to get past something like that. Like true. I don't know. Hunter. Not true. everyone can like not a lot. Of, I don't know. There's a chance that he, I don't know, or he's not. Why wouldn't you, if you're with the right person, why wouldn't like getting a house be like your dream? No, right. I don't, that's what I'm saying. So it doesn't make sense. That's what I'm saying. I don't think he, I don't think it's resentment. I think he's just like moving on. Okay. So maybe they're not, it, they're on different pages. I think y'all are way. both on different pages. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you deserve better in the sense of someone that is making a plan for the both of you together just like you are. I also think he's wanting something different because yeah. he's moving back home, he's moving back into something that maybe is more comfortable for him, or he's just pursuing a job that he really desires, even though y'all had a good life, sounds well, like. No, like, like I wanna know what the conversation was about him doing that. Like, did you say like, what, what the like, right? It's weird. Like there had to have been something that happened in between then to be like, why did you do that? Or I thought we were on the same page. I just bought this house. Like, what were you thinking? There has to have been something that's come from Unless that. he's been, unless it's like his dream job. And he's like, right. I can't pass up this opportunity. You need to come with me where I can provide for us. Well, and then what if he's saying like, we can do long distance, like no big deal. I just like really want this. Maybe we don't have the context. I know. I want to say, well, you guys are just on different pages and it sounds like he just doesn't really care. But then at the same time, I don't know if that's true. And I think sometimes like people can have their differences and it's like, it's a give and take, right? Like how much are you willing to put into the relationship? Like how much do you love him? Do you want to like, would you give everything up to like go be with him? It's like, what are you going to think in 10 years? Let's say you stay in your house that you just bought. And he goes and you guys break up and you move on and you might find like another guy. Are you always going to look back and been like, dang, like, you know, I really loved him. I should have just like in retrospect, like the house and everything didn't actually mean that much to me. Like I loved him and I, I should have just gone and I could have moved past it. My thought is you know? that neither one of y'all are hundred percent confident in the future of your relationship. Yeah. Definitely. Because if he's like, I'm going to go. I'm gonna go do this regardless of what you do. Doesn't sound like he's right. there with you. And for him to have to say that, where he like doesn't feel comfortable in you just coming with him. Like if he was to say, I'm gonna go, I got this dream job, I want you to come with me. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily, I don't know. My first thought is maybe you don't necessarily love him 110%. That's what I said. For you to just like jump on the plane and like move back with him, sell yeah. the house and like start a new life back home. Yeah. I almost think you, there's more to the story mm -hmm. that's not there. Mm -hmm. That maybe there's a deeper underlying relationship issue yeah. that you kind of know like, maybe hey, this is like maybe kind of like the end of the relationship. Like we're kind yeah. of splitting ways. Yeah. Unless he's saying, let's do long distance. And you're like, why are we doing long distance? Right. I wanna be together. Right. right. However, one thing I will add, the fact that you left in the piece of we were once engaged and I called it off. There's something coming around the corner now that I think about it that's impacting that's the future. I think. That's Unless you were just trying to say like, yeah, y'all were like close to me. I think she wouldn't have said that if that wasn't a part of the issue that's happening. That's why I said he's re maybe resentful because yeah. she's saying I called it off and now he's moving. It's like that all to me. It's like, okay, then why do you include the engagement if that's not an issue anymore? It's a very tough one because I don't know if there's enough context there. Yeah. But if we're reading between the lines that you provided, Seems I like, think yeah. there's a big gray area there that might be black and white for you. A lot of, maybe it's just gray in general, mm -hmm. but my view is that separate ways. That's what I think. And I, what, and I go back to what I said earlier, that if 
you kind of have to decide how much do you love him and how much are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to move on and are you gonna regret it or are you cool with that? And you gotta know how much he loves you and how much he's willing to sacrifice. Agree. You can't sacrifice everything and move back with him if you're doubtful that he's no, gonna No, but to you. sometimes it's like, you know, maybe he's still really hurt from the engagement and she maybe needs like a big move like that for him to like feel validated. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's just, in no. my perspective. No, no, and I, I see that. You know, it's kind of like, hey, like, no, I'm proving to you, like, I do really love you. Like, what if he's just feeling super down? And what if he's not and she moves? That too. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that's why it's her decision. I, I don't know. I've never been in an engagement and called it off, though, so. Yeah, I know. It's intense. That would be intense. That would, call, that would cause some family issues, too, I bet. Oh, God. Like. Talk about tough. Yeah. Can you imagine? And it sounds like maybe you have a good relationship with his parents but the fact that they wanted him to move back for the job mm -hmm. that was either because they wanted him closer to them and back home or yeah. to kind of move on from you possibly yeah regardless you know more information than us make a wise decision let us know if we can help you anymore yeah i need to put on sweatpants i'm so comfortable sorry next question julie just put on sweats and she's bringing some Chipperoni's Triscuits. Mm, Triscuits. I put them in a bowl so we don't eat Should we get our Marlowe cheese? That'd be good. That'd be great. Maybe get some good nibbles. Good nibbles. All right. My roommate and I are really good friends. We live together because of college. I currently met a guy and she's been in a relationship for three years. She was, she was super against this new guy I met because he was in a relationship for seven years but we instantly clicked and started dating after three months of his breakup. So they okay. dated for seven years. He dated someone for seven years, broke up three months later, they're in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I know I noticed she always texts him and likes to study with him at our place for their class they take together, which is fine. But she compares her own relationship to what I barely have going on. I'm very closed off about my private intimacy. And although we are great friends and have been, we have gone through things that I can no longer trust her or have so much trust as a friend. Mm -hmm. I don't want to ruin my friendship with her and I don't want this guy to think I'm crazy for speaking up to him about being uncomfortable. Maybe I'm just crazy. Okay, what? I'm confused. I'm kind of too. Her Instagram's Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting all the pieces. Mm. So her Instagram, I click on it when it's in Spanish, I have to do a translation. So. Okay, maybe we'll, that's we'll piece the piece the pieces together. <laughs> okay, so basically, new clip, better questions. Christopher Robbins, do you want to come answer some questions? Last week, Great advice. I broke up with my boyfriend of a year and a half mm -hmm. for a few reasons. Okay. And what are your opinions on a couple of them? Okay. If I did the right thing or not. I feel like I did, but I don't want to second guess myself and really value your opinions because I think you could have good heads on your shoulders. Oh, well, thank yeah. you. My boyfriend drank almost every night. Mm. But not at a happy hour cocktail. Tough. Abused drugs, like smoked weed from the moment he woke up until he went to bed at night. Okay, it's excessive. And would even wake up in the middle of the night to take toke from his bong. Okay. And did cocaine quite often. Okay. Like Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. At least every week. He also texted a girl he used to sleep with some inappropriate things when we first started dating, mm -hmm. but I forgave him nice. and tried to move past it. Angel. Recently, I found out he was still talking to a girl that made an inappropriate advance at him through text, okay. which I saw and expressed I was uncomfortable with, and also was texting one of its girlfriends at 3 a.m. There's so much more, but obviously can't explain the details. When I would try to communicate, Sorry for the Triscuit, just waving across the screen. When I would try to communicate that I didn't like certain things, he would either blow it off or we'd get into huge arguments that ended with him punching holes in the wall or breaking glass. Okay. I'm, it's, just I'm not the type of, it's just not the type of life I wanted for myself. Definitely. I guess I'm 99% sure I did the right thing by leaving, but I almost want you to answer it because there might be other people out there with similar situations and it might help them open their eyes. No one on YouTube talks about drugs, or alcohol. We talk about alcohol. We talk about alcohol all the time. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Um, 
when is too much too much mm -hmm. or not normal and i think it's important to discuss what a normal healthy relationship is and when it's not when something is toxic mm -hmm. first things first Sweet. i think i think he should break up with you and move on you think he should <laughs> Kidding. He's like oh. a dick. Yeah, he's a dick. I think he's okay, no, sorry, he's not a douche. That's mean. That's oh wait, y'all already broke up. You already broke up. Okay. I think I think you treated him poorly. I think he deserved better. So I think you, I think okay. you breaking up with him was a good move. Girl, I think you sound like an angel and I feel like you did everything you could and there's nothing more in that relationship for you. Like you gave everything that you had and he is clearly not ready for a relationship and might not ever be. Might not ever be. He's not the one for you. So you made the right decision, just telling you that. Run for the hills, you're good, keep going, don't look back, okay? Um, I think in regards to the drug situation, I think that like nowadays there's a lot of what you would say are like functioning drug addicts, right? There's like a lot of people that, you know, he, he's not on pills, but like, people that take pills all the time yeah. or um, if he does cocaine a couple times a week and is smoking weed, clearly a sun up to sun down even in the middle of the night. To me, that's a bit excessive. I think that- A bit excessive. It's excessive. Like I'm saying that once a drug, I think once drug use or like recreational drug use starts to become a conversation or something that you have to think about Red flag. or maybe say, that's when it's an issue. So um, it's a different thing. I'm not saying that I, I've never done cocaine. I'm not for it. But like, if it's like a once in a, once a month, like you're maybe partying and you do it, like to me, I wouldn't necessarily see that as like a strong issue if it goes against if it doesn't go against your values. But right. if it's happening, neither one of us will like, just put on the yeah. Record. We're not. Ne neither one of us has ever done cocaine. No. Neither one of us judge people who have done cocaine recreationally. No. Um, in the sense of like tried it at like a party or a rave or something like that. Like we know that's part of like our culture these days. However, if it if it becomes a bigger issue where yeah. like it's beyond the values and morals that you have and it's mm -hmm. like hard for you to accept, I think then maybe you're not lining up. Lining up in your relationship. Exactly. And that's for anybody. If someone does cocaine one time and it's it's against your values and they're like, whatever babe, like fuck you, like I did it one time. Like, yeah, like it's a hard side to take either way, but like that's a moral value problem. And like, yeah. if it's a moral value problem, that's when it's like a really big issue in the relationship. Yeah, there's gonna be friction. It sounds like she doesn't really care about that. Like that's not really- I'm not even talking her, about her. I'm just, talking about like yeah, yeah, yeah. anyone People in, in general. general. But I think for her, she seems pretty like laid back, but when you know, you're not getting what you need and someone's not showing up, clearly mm -hmm. I think Typically to me, like when there's excessive drug use um, in somebody's life, it's usually a symptom for something deeper that's going on that's just being masked by the drug use, and be, which and everyone be, knows. But, so I think that obviously if you, you couldn't even have a conversation without punching a wall, there's definitely some layers yeah. there. And it just, just tends to be a, a distraction to escape like what's actually happening up here. So Yeah, and beyond that, if, if he's treating the drug and all that kind of stuff or like texting the girls like there's so many problems in that so in many questions so many that like we could we could say break up with him to all of those mm -hmm. each and every single one of them if they were individual issues he shouldn't be texting another girl he shouldn't be doing any of the crap he's doing mm -hmm. he shouldn't be punching holes in the walls or breaking glasses due to like no. you expressing your feelings and expressing yourself it's just an issue and when drugs become an issue in your relationship where either male or female puts drugs and the recreational use of drugs as more important than the relationship, then there's no longer work to do. There's no longer a relationship. Mm, there. there isn't. And I think that And whether you were expressing your feelings about drugs or just anything in your relationship, like maybe he gets the off drinking, drugs. The drinking and drugs. Maybe yeah. he gets off drugs and quits drinking, but you express your feelings towards something else down the road and he yeah, and he the still wall, can't handle like, it. That sounds like there's also anger problems there beyond just drug use. Yeah. I think that you are it's good that you guys are separated and I know that it's hard because I don't know. It's just tough. Like you can always love people regardless of like, you know, 
what's going on in their life and everything, but I just don't think that's for, for you. I mean, you seem to be on a different level in terms of what you can provide and deliver emotionally in a relationship. Yeah. And I just think that you deserve somebody that can match that. And there's definitely someone out there that will give that to you. So, and you even mentioned like, yeah, you've got you a head on your shoulders and you've moved on already. Yeah. So thanks for bringing this question up. You've definitely made the right decision. Yeah. Don't effing look back. Yeah. You're already in the hills. Yeah. Go down the valley of the other side of the hills and find a new guy. Yeah. There's one out there for you. Or be patient and kind of have fun. Have a single life for a little bit. For sure. Since you went through a rough patch. And now you know what. Not to go for. Not to go for. What not to take and. Change yeah. what you're attracted to. Uh -huh. Anyways. Great question. And thanks uh -huh. for asking. Thanks for submitting and being honest. I have a sentimental problem. I have a boyfriend since nine months. I think I love my boyfriend, but I'm not in love with him. I'm not sure that I've ever been. I love him deeply, but without passion. I think he's the perfect guy for me. We are meant to be together, but I don't feel any butterflies in my stomach. I think I'm not very physically attracted to him. I want to stay with him, but I'm asking myself so many questions. What should I do, please? I'm afraid of missing the man in my life because we are very complimentary. Thanks a lot if you can respond, and even if not, uh, thanks for all your videos. Kisses from Paris. Okay, so she's French. Um, yeah, that sucks. I'd say move on. You are the weakest link. <laughs> Goodbye. I, After all, I, I would like, say- Like hold out for the one. I would say- He's not the one. He's not the one. You'll know. If he was the one, you would know it. But it sounds like you know he's not the one. Don't- Don't settle. Don't settle or marry for compatibility. Uh. Unless you're to the point of compatibility. Like, unless you're 40, 50, 60. Yeah, and time's, single, it's, time's ticking. Divorced, something like that. I don't know. That's my viewpoint, and we might get bashed for this. But my true thinking is that, like, you should be with someone who you are passionate about. Yeah. And he deserves someone who's passionately in love with him. Totally. And physically attracted Agreed. to him. Agree. Everything you expressed, he deserves that. And you also deserve to be like providing that to somebody. And I would almost feel like he's in the worst, like on the, on the weaker spot than she is. Well, of course, he's gonna get his heart broken. Well, I also like the fact that she doesn't have these feelings towards him. You yeah. dated plenty of good girls, like yeah. sweet, nice people. And mm -hmm. you dated plenty of nice, like gentlemen, guys yeah. that you just didn't, have it for no like you could have made it work oh. with any of your boyfriends and i, I knew it, like it, i could have made it work with any of my girlfriends actually i was in a yeah i was in a situation like that yeah. before this the, the guy wanted to marry me and i was like i knew it wasn't it honey and i was like no i've got to get out and i felt terrible but i was like i know that i can't do this she, it's like no it's way. just like it's not there and you, not there. you know when it's not there you're you she is recognizing that it's not there mm -hmm. But you're staying there because you care about him. Of course. You love There's a friendship. You built. love him for who he is. It's like the friendship and you're like there's probably some comfort there. Yeah. You are a nice, sweet person, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, there's just like there's more to love in a marriage than just that alone. And I I just think that she's still curious because so I don't think that you can I don't know. You have to decide if you want to not explore what else is out there and you want to commit because you don't ever want to lose him or if you are willing to like give up the possibility of a life with him so that you can meet something better. I'm very much on the side with if it's if it's so bad or like such a thought enough to ask the question that it's bad. Then it's time to like maybe move on. Yeah. Not only for yourself, but for him. Like, if you care about him, do him the favor and allow him, like, the time to find someone new. Yeah. Okay. I think so, too. Okay. My boyfriend and I have been dating for two years. I'm 22 and he's 25. We have a super healthy relationship and it was one of those love at first sight feelings since the beginning of our relationship. Cute. We practically live together and we have had so much fun being around each other every day. Last week we were having our Friday happy hour cocktails and I saw a notification on his phone from a girl from his past that has ha he has had an extremely hard time getting over and they decided to continue being friends. I've met this girl before and I 
would consider us to be friends as well. Although I trust her, I still get uneasy about the thought of them talking because of their history. That night when I saw they were texting, I casually asked, hey babe, who are you talking to? And he replied, oh, nobody. I started to get suspicious. Although I swore to myself I would never do this, I decided to look through his messages with this girl and I saw extremely concerning things regarding them talking about their history and her telling my boyfriend that she is now single and him responding in a very flirty way. Disappointed in myself that I went through his phone, I decided not to say anything about it, but instead asked him and say, said that I saw a notification pop up on his phone and I saw it was her and questioned why he didn't tell me. I also asked him if I should be concerned about anything they discussed while they were texting. He just said, no, we were just catching up. He also lied to me when I asked if she was still dating her boyfriend. She's single and now, and he said she isn't. Basically, what I'm asking is where do I go from here? Shoot. That's a tough one. That's tough. Well, okay. it's not tough. I mean, it's not, but, but that she's like, I feel like she's being like mature about it. By the way, I would do the exact same thing. I feel like I would look, look through the phone Here's too. the thing. Looking through the phone, it feels shitty when you're telling someone that you look through someone's phone. But clearly she, I mean, she but can't get the truth. the reason you look through someone's phone, the reason you did, mm -hmm. is the same reason we would have looked through each other's phone, mm -hmm. is if you had caught them in a lie yeah. about it. Like, you already saw him texting her. You asked him like, oh, who is that? And they just brushed it all. Oh, nobody. Like, you, you instantly know he's lying and hiding something, so you're like, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. It's kind of like what you- And he proved himself that he couldn't tell you the truth, so get to the freaking bottom of it. It's like, kind of like what you know can't hurt you, so, like, why- What you don't look know through, can't hurt you. What you don't know can't hurt you, and like, why look through the phone if, like, he's not gonna tell you the truth and you can't force him, but at the same time, I mean, I would've done the same thing, honestly. You, you would look through and the phone- I would've been pissed. Anyone would look through the phone if they knew their- Partner, spouse, boyfriend, mm -hmm. girlfriend was lying to them. Mm -hmm. If you knew they were lying to them, like them lying oh, yeah. to you, you'd be like, okay, fine, you're not gonna tell me the truth, I'll find out myself. You'd look in a second. I'd look in a heartbeat. <laughs> if you were lying to me, and vice versa. If you if you freaking mm -hmm. knew I was lying to you and you saw on my phone that I was texting someone in my past, and oh. I, I was like, Oh, it's nobody, baby, don't worry. It's my mom. You'd be like, Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna find out. But actually, I we would have probably called each other out on the spot, be like, whatever, I saw what it was. She yeah. me your phone right now. Yeah. But you were probably actually smarter. She's like, okay, anyways, it's not about the, the snooping. It's about what's I, happening. The only reason I'm, I'm mentioning the snooping is because it's, don't feel bad about it. You did it for a reason because there was a lack of trust there. Yeah. <laughs> Goose. <laughs> um, he, loves he loves it. Okay, so let's get to the meat of what's actually hap going on here. Oh, two years. Shit. And they have a very healthy relationship. She thought. She thought. I wish we would. Okay. I, honestly, God, we have enough context. Dang it. We have Why enough, do you do that? We have enough context to know that he's in the wrong. Is she asking what she should do? She should break up yeah. with him? Yeah. She said, where do I go from here? So she hasn't said anything. Okay, this is what I think. So I think that. First off, you should say something. For, okay, I, I know, but but Hundo, this is the thing is that Hundo P. I think he probably does like really like you and care about you. Things can be complicated, especially when it comes to exes, because I feel like people you just have like you build these deep relationships with people, and they no matter what you're always gonna like care for them because they basically were like a friend, right? A friend that you had in your life that was. Chunk of time. A chunk of time is deeper. There's memories there, right? So, so when somebody messages you that you were in a relationship with, it's not just like, oh, it's nothing, you know. Like it's, it's hard to just write that off like it's nothing. So I'm sure in the moment he was like, he re he shouldn't. It wasn't right for him to flirt back, but he probably got like a little carried away maybe in the moment. I'm not saying that it was right, but. Totally. I'm sure he might not like want to pursue anything with her, but it could have just been like a stupid kind of immature, like he was like, oh, I liked the attention. You know what I mean? He was aroused by the attention. Not like aroused. I'm he just probably, saying, he, probably he just else. like liked it, whatever. He was probably mm -hmm. flattered was that she was it. texting him. So I don't think it's that he doesn't necessarily like care about he you He liked the anything. attention. Yeah. And he was probably getting a little aroused. I mean, don't say that. <laughs> God. He was liking her attention when she was texting him. Mm-hmm. It was bringing back memories, comfort. Ooh, I'm, I'm like kind of talking to someone mm -hmm. that like I'm comfortable with, that like we've had a 
physical past probably there was something there well it's like you know if someone texts you that used to like you used to date you and they're expressing interest you're kind of like oh okay. mm -hmm, yeah. i still got it you good know what shit. i mean <laughs> totally good stuff so, but 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 this is forgivable what do you think could you express your could you it's forgivable, this, this but forgivable, you definitely need to have a conversation. But about you gotta it. call them out about it. Yeah, you do. And you say, obviously, you're obviously pissed. Of course, who wouldn't be? I mean, but but not pissed enough to like. No, she's react. she's not she's gonna mature. be. She's definitely very mature. So I. But she's handled it perfectly. Don't use the like an angel. Don't use the opportunity to react though. Like, no. Go into it. You just need to say, hey, I need to know. Them. Be like, hey, I want to talk to you about a couple things. Yeah. I want to. Confess something. Yeah. For these this yeah. time period when this happened. Yeah. I looked through your phone and I saw what I saw. Mm-hmm. And I love you and yeah. I understand that these things could possibly happen. Totally. However, I wanna touch base to see like how how you're feeling. And I think she says, like, I just need to know if you're ready for our relationship, if you're engaging in this sort of behavior, like, are you ready to be serious with me? Like, I don't wanna have these trust issues. I don't wanna have to look through your phone. I don't wanna have to see anything pop up. I don't wanna have to think about it, especially after now. That's a good so, point, honestly. For a guy, the, the thing that'll get a guy in check is like, I want a man who's not gonna entertain that like boyish behavior. Like, I need you to, are you ready to commit to me? And like, right. as an adult, like And if you're not, that that's man. fine, but you need to tell me so I can move on because I'm not, you can't sit around wondering if he's gonna like go for something that just pops up all the time. Like, right. it can't happen. You need to get the commitment from him. I have to say, although they're just friends, they're not. Mm -mm. He's obviously tempted by her. Well, they shouldn't be talking. It's inappropriate. It's inappropriate for them to be talking. I'm not saying it's inappropriate for everyone to, to not be able to like, not talk to their ex. Like, it happens. It pretty much is. Yeah, but like, it, I, 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 I think it is. Like, we wouldn't talk to our exes. Unless it's like a... A very cordial, like, yeah. family, friend situation. Yeah. Like, we were together, mm -hmm. like, in high school or... Mm -hmm. You can talk to your ex. Yeah. Every situation is different. We are the type of people that wouldn't talk to exes out of respect for each other. Because I think there's a piece of respect there, too. Yeah. Well, and it's like, okay, what? Are you really going to, like... Just be friends. Just be friends? Or, or It's not even that. Are you really, like... Is it worth the awkwardness? Like, sometimes not. It's like... Is it worth it? I don't like, know. Like, yeah. you're... Okay. She's a, she or he is an ex. Like, like, how cool are they? Holy crap. I mean... Right. I don't know. Unless it's just, like, you're running into them. Because small town mm -hmm. or something like that. Anyways. You shouldn't be coming to him saying she's single now. No. He shouldn't be engaging in that, that... I mean, especially if you guys are friends. That's what she she said that they're friends. No bitches have loyalty these days. Can't throw them. No. Trust them as far as you can throw them. My thoughts. He either cuts off his communication with her. It's awkward as shit if he has a text and say, my girlfriend won't let me talk to you anymore. Like, that's stupid. No, well, that's just wuss. Come that's on. Wuss. Like, get it together. He no. should just, like, stop talking to her. Yeah. I mean, I'm annoyed at him. <laughs> Let me ask you this: If this is our, so if, this is our if this is our relationship, yeah. and the ex texted me again, yeah, would you want me to respond with something or just ignore it? Well, I think it would depend. Can I answer that for you? I think it would depend on how I felt. Like sometimes it, either either it's a clear message, like hey. I'm in a relationship and I'm moving on. Like we're not, I'm not, we're no longer like talking. It's like a very like, I'm cutting you off. Here's the delivery. Or it's like a ghost. So either way, but it's not like, oh, I can't talk to you anymore. It's like, no, like, please don't the talk to me. The latter crap is so common, huh? Like I got busted talking to you and I got I don't know, is it? I got in trouble. I can't do talk people to you do that? Yeah, are you kidding me? But like immaturely. I'm sorry, who's in the priority here? Is it me or is it her? Hey, I don't think we should be talking. I think I crossed some lines last time we chatted and like I don't want to yeah. be tempted to do so again. And I love my girlfriend or I'm really interested in my girlfriend and I don't want anything to get in the way even with an ex. So like, yeah, yeah we can still be friends. I'm going to be nice to you when I see you. She still likes you a lot and respect you. Like, we, we have a cordial relationship, but I don't think it's good we text. Yeah. I think too that- Texting's, like, texting's the issue. 
If you run yeah. into someone with your girlfriend right. all You're together, not there's not like a little flirty no. thing there. That's the thing. I think that you have to have that chat with him too because maybe he, like this might be like a good reality check to like snap him in. He might be like right now, you know, just stupid and not realizing what he has. And then the minute you say something in this conversation happens, he might be like, oh my God, what did I do? Like there's, I don't care about her. That was stupid. Like people make mistakes. So just keep that in mind. Um, and I think it's only worth having a conversation. That's all. Agree. All right. Okay, keep us posted. Oh, we should just real quick. Edit. She gave a little bit of extra context. What? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Couple things. No. Okay. Am I the one in the wrong because I snooped through his phone? It's no. really hard for me to know everything they talked about and the fact that he lied to me about it. But he obviously doesn't know I have the truth. I feel terrible for what I did, but at the same time, I'm secretly upset with him for lying to me and basically mm -hmm. cheating on me through text. Mm -hmm. So cheating on, okay, yeah, yeah that's cheating, mm -hmm. right, I would say. Mm -hmm. My head is spinning and I don't know what to do. Love y'all's channel. In case it helps, I can drop a few of the combos they had. She mentioned to him about wanting to travel more and he replied, we need to go on that trip to Hawaii that we used to always talk about. What? They then started talking about the road trip snacks where she mentioned something that is one of my favorite things that he absolutely hates in what she said. I love those. Oh, he's so annoyed. Ew. Ugh. Goose, that is not, not okay, Goose. And lastly, when she said she was going to bed, he replied with, what if I don't want you to? I would die. Love your advice. I would die. Yeah. So. Okay, so we, and then you can just add it. Even, with, like even without, a, like we answered a lot of the, question without that context but now reading that context I, I would still say we same. still stand by our answer however one thing we will add is that two years is not that long yeah so regardless of what happens like you have a lot of opportunity to move on and, and find grow someone from new this. and go yeah. from this yeah. and maybe even like a breakup period will set him straight a little bit I yeah know. i think he needs a little bit of a reality check so you and you gotta, should 100 if you're worried about what he's going to think about you for going through his phone girl then there's an issue there because what he did was way it's, more wrong than what you did. Yeah, sorry. Y'all are one in your relationship. Like, I don't know. We have each other's passwords to everything. Not because I don't we don't know. trust we each other. We would never, even now, like if something were to happen, I wouldn't even, like if you went through my phone, I would never be like, you went through my phone. Like you have full rights right. to everything that I have right. and vice, vice versa. versa. Like right. it's never going to be like, you invaded have, like, my privacy. It's like, not no. like we're doing, it's not because we don't trust each other, but it's like we we're are just one and the one. same. It's like, she knows just about everything I'm doing yeah. and vice versa. Like if I'm talking to some woman on Instagram, I'm telling her about the conversation that day because like it's a, it's a chill conversation. I'm not hiding anything. Yeah, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. This is the end of Spritz and Chips. End of Spritz and Chips. I don't know how long this actually is. I think it was a good one. We're going to go over and hop on Instagram live for a little bit. We're going live. Yeah. Just because we live for lives. That's it for Spritz and Chips. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. We got some good videos coming this week. Fashion, vlogs, beauty content, home content, never ending. Stay tuned. So subscribe if you aren't subscribed. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you soon. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Tell me what you wanna do. If you wanna come to my place.